How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now this video, I'm going to take you guys through my team selection for the upcoming Game Week 13. Looks to be quite an interesting Game Week, a lot of injury news that we have to kind of talk about that will influence our transfer plan going into the upcoming Game Week. But just before that, I'll be also looking at my Game Week 12 team and just seeing how the team got on there in terms of the overall points. As I always like to say, the past game weeks will definitely influence our future game weeks. So it's always nice to look back before planning for the future. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So if yesterday's Champions League fixtures weren't an indication of that you guys should wait for the midweek football to conclude, I don't really know what is going to be a fixture for that. So touch wood, hopefully tonight there's not going to be any more injuries. We have Man City and Liverpool coming up next. But first I want to touch on what happened yesterday. And obviously the big news coming out of that Chelsea versus Juventus game was going to be the injury to Ben Shaw around the 70 minute mark. So unfortunately, Ben Chilwell did pick up a knee injury. Now, I want to get right off the bat here. Please don't be looking on Twitter today. There was kind of a lot of news from sources that aren't confirmed on how long Ben Chilwell was going to be out for. But the real story is going to be this. So as of a kind of 5.40 p.m. South African time after work, that's going to be about 3.30 UK time with daylight saving. So as of recording this video, the news is going to be that the results have not come back yet on that knee scan, but they are fearing the worst for Ben Chilwell. And there might be a little bit of a suggestion of maybe something like an ACL injury. Now that is not confirmed, so please just wait for either the Thursday or Friday. I'm pretty sure news will break before the Tuchel press conference, which I think should be on Friday afternoon. But I'm pretty sure the news will come out before that, as this is kind of a big story on the Chelsea side of things. So as of recording this video, we don't know how long he's going to be out for, but as I said, there are suggestions that it's probably going to be for quite a long time. So if they are suggesting kind of a season-long uh, ACL injury, my kind of common sense tells me that we should at least be expecting maybe a month or so. But that's why I said don't get any speculation, but uh, just prepare yourself that this might be quite a long-term injury if you guys do own Ben Chilwell. For us non bench or owners, this is obviously going to affect who we do bring in. I was personally looking at bringing in the English fullback uh, this week for someone like a Diaz, but now I'm almost thinking of going for someone like an Alonso as a potential punt. But we'll be getting more clarity on the bench or situation in the upcoming day. So please don't panic here, guys. I want to relax you guys a little bit. Just wait for four more news, as the news we currently had might be a little bit sketchy. In terms of the United game, I don't think it was any injuries out of that, just besides the fact that United did win. So that's quite a good talking point. Maybe if you guys are looking for a new manager bounce, under Carrick have got their first win. So maybe for the upcoming game against Chelsea, they will look a little bit better. Who knows in that situation? But tonight coming up, we do have the Liverpool versus Porto game, which I'm pretty sure won't be the biggest, kind of strongest 11 that Jurgen Klopp does have. They do get a lot of money, though, for a Champions League win. So that could also be a kind of an indication that Klopp might put out his uh, strong players but I do think that Liverpool side should win without a couple of stars against Porto. So we'll see on that front, but I'll definitely keep my eyes closely to Trent and Salah and is hoping that they enter game week 12 uh, injury free. But the big game tonight is definitely going to be Man City versus Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, so PSG taking on Man City. Now this group is super close. I think it's one point between Man City and PSG. So kind of everything's open in this group. So I'm pretty sure both sides will be putting up their strongest 11. So just keep your guys' eyes on this. As I think this might be another 90 minutes for our boy Cancelo, who's played a large majority of Man City's minutes. So I'm a little bit worried about him, but hopefully all the plays tonight finish without getting injured. But otherwise, just pay attention to those uh, press conferences coming up on Thursday and Friday, as hopefully those will give us all we need to know about our players. But now going on to our Game Week 12 team, and yet again, we've got a nice little green arrow on the bounce with a lovely 76 points. So let me know in the comments down below how you guys got on. How's the overall rank looking and the overall points? Always like to see how you guys are catching up. Some absolutely insane rankings in my comments are usually, so hopefully you guys are doing well and not too many red arrows but starting off with the bench, what's there to talk about on the bench? Zero points all around. I think the only thing to kind of a touch on is going to be a Ruben Diaz, who was actually benched for that to fix on the weekend. A little bit annoying, to be honest, because when I needed him to come through on that Sunday evening afternoon, wherever they did play, I really didn't need him to come through with some points, as that would have made that green arrow even bigger. So just imagine what would have happened if Ruben Diaz played. Definitely would have got a clean sheet, maybe some bonus points there, and there would have definitely been more than what Smith Rowe came off the 
bench with with only a measly two points. But not too annoyed there. It's just a little bit weird how Ruben Diaz is being benched so much this season. Maybe not really at the form that he has been last season. Maybe Pep wants to rotate those center backs a little bit more. But definitely something to keep our eyes on entering a festive period where the game is going to come thick and fast and really do need a strong starting 11. But now focusing on some better things in terms of our team, our overall game week 12 team modes was going to be defense is the best attack. You can see our attackers not getting many points, but our defenders coming through massively. Starting off with Ben Foster against United, who actually got an assist. I mean, absolutely crazy. I would recommend you guys going and actually watching that assist. He kind of lobs it forward. It gets missed by two players, then a defender, then the Watford attacker misses the shot, and then that player actually comes in and scores. So really miraculous kind of assist there but I'm going to take that and five points is going to be quite nice when the most popular Ramsdale ended up with only one point. But now going on to our three star performers of the Davy FPL team. It's going to be Reese James, Jao Cancelo, and then also Trent Alexander-Arnold. So the lowest two scorers, James and Cancelo, scoring 12 points there. Memory serves me right. I think it was a clean sheet, an assist, and then maximum bonus points, whereas Trent got an extra assist to his name. So all three of these players just showing that attacking threat that they all possess. We spoke about this in the kind of Game Week 12 team selection that we now are not only expecting some defensive returns, but from an attacking point of view, these three look absolutely sensational, and I think they are much must owns if you guys don't own one of the three. I guess with the chill injury, James's ownership is going to completely skyrocket. And I would recommend if you guys don't own James, definitely look at bringing him in. As even though Chelsea has some tough fixtures coming up, I do think that the defense can still keep clean sheets. We're then going on to our attacking department. Luckily, we captained the highest scorer in our midfield and our forwards. That was going to be Mo Salah with a lovely goal against Arsenal. No kind of skill needed there. we just a simple tap-in from Sadio Mane. But just shows you that even though Mo Salah might not be on the best of form, he still is getting in those areas and with a lovely goal against Arsenal, as I said. So 8 points, double to 16, just shows you what kind of a perma captain he's going to be for these upcoming game weeks. As he's not giving us any reason not to captain him. I would understand maybe if Salah wasn't returning points and maybe Harry Kane was getting the points but it's the complete opposite I mean Mo Salah is outperforming every other attacker and now we're kind of looking at maybe a defender like a Reese James or Cancelo to captain for the future game weeks if we want to go differential. Mbuma only with two points after a little bit of a weird game that they did play. Unfortunately, he yet again hit the post, but it wasn't really like Brentford weren't scoring goals. It seems like every attacker that I own, the team is scoring goals, but they're not getting involved, which is really annoying. So unfortunately, Mbumo is going to have to change his shooting boots, maybe tie the laces a bit tighter because he's simply hitting the post and not getting the ball in the back of the net. Smith Rowe, I guess I can't really blame for those two points. He was on my bench, actually, uh, for the Liverpool fixture. Happy that I'd actually put him first on my bench over someone like a White, because obviously White got zero points after conceding four goals. But overall in that Liverpool game, didn't really think that he was that involved from an attacking point of view. I just hope that in game week 13, get back to that scoring form of things uh, against an easier opposition. Kai Havertz, our final midfielder, actually had a relatively disappointing game after his team scored three goals against Leicester. Uh, it seems like Kai Havertz is the king of not being involved when Chelsea do score. And unfortunately, came off a little bit substituted earlier on with only the three points. Going on to our four department, yet again, it's our cheapest attacker getting the most points. It's going to be Adam Armstrong with only an assist against a Norwich side that actually ended up winning against Southampton. So that wasn't really in the script. Was a little bit disappointed with only five points against a Norwich side who defensively I thought aren't that great. So maybe Armstrong could have got some more points out of that one as Southampton definitely got a couple of shots on target. But Harry Kane and Antonio, what's more to say about them? Only with the two-point appearances. A Harry Kane, super disappointing against Leeds. Did have quite a good chance. I kind of went through the keeper's legs and then hit the post. Might be a little bit unlucky on that one. But overall, wasn't really looking that strong in that Leeds game. And actually looked quite slow. Antonio with a tough game against Wolves. Luckily though, West Ham did not score and Antonio didn't get any points because then that would have been another game week where West Ham scored a few and Antonio didn't get any attacking returns. Then I would probably be worried, but because they scored zero and Antonio only got two points, I guess we can classify this as a little bit of an off game for West Ham. But overall, 76 points took us a nice little green arrow up to about the 160k mark. Ticking along nicely, would have really liked that green arrow to be slightly more, but not going to get too greedy here. Any green arrow is going to be a good game week hopefully in these upcoming game weeks we're going to just push on more and get more green arrows but as i said let me know in the comments down below how you guys got on what was the score that you ended on as i did see some massive points being scored in game week 12 
But now moving on to our transfer plan, and as you saw on the previous screen, only one free transfer and 0.0, .0 in the bank. So we're really cutting it thin on the bank side of things. But in terms of that one free transfer, there are three kind of decisions that I want to make. So the three kind of options that I am looking at, the first one's going to be Ruben Diaz out for Marcus Alonso. As we spoke about with that Ben Shaw injury, if Ben Shaw was going to be out, I'm pretty sure Tuchel will stick to that back five system. And that's going to be the most natural left back is therefore going to be Marcus Alonso. So is Alonso going to be nailed? I do think for at least the upcoming game weeks, if a Ben Shaw is going to be out injured, they might have maybe shift things around, maybe find more of an attacking player to play on that left-hand side. But I think as of the upcoming game weeks, Marcus Alonso will be the man to go for. So I think automatically that makes him a great option because he kind of fits into that to wing back system, really an attacking player. We've seen that in previous FPL seasons, great going forward. So I think it's only going to complement that uh, wing back position as the bench Shaw is playing well already. So I think that Marcus Alonso can play, My, maybe not on the same level, but I still think he can get some attacking returns. The only kind of downside is that I am taking a player out that could potentially play quite a good uh, festive period. Ruben Diaz should be nailed in most game weeks. I should be at least uh, going to be playing in that starting 11. And I think Man City will have a relatively good festive period as their fixtures are quite easy. The next option though is probably the most direct one that I did see. It's going to be Kai Havertz out for Diego Jota. So Kai Havertz is another player that was actually injured uh, in this Champions League fixture against Juventus. Wasn't actually injured in the fixture but was injured before and he does have a little bit of a hamstring strain if I do recall. So he might not even be fit for this upcoming game week. So that's a really direct transfer there. Diego Jota was training yesterday for Liverpool. There was a little bit of concern about his knock after game week 12 but it seems like he's fine and if he does play tonight I hope that he comes out injured free but as I said this is the most simple transfer to make Jota playing for Liverpool 7.5 million it's right in front of you there a 7.5 million nailed attacker for Liverpool is simply great value for money and therefore I would recommend getting him if you guys don't but finally, the combination that I was thinking about or the trance that I was thinking about, the one that I had penciled in as the game week 12 clock uh, kind of ticked down was going to be Adam Armstrong out for Huang from Wolves. Now you might be asking me, why would I be bringing in Huang from Wolves? Hasn't been playing that well. It's these next two fixtures for Wolves. They have two really nice fixtures coming up. The first one being Norwich away, I think, in game week 13. Great fixture. And Wolves overall have been quite strong attacking wise. Not really scoring the most goals, but the stats are definitely there. So Adam Armstrong out to has tough fixtures coming up for Huang with two lovely ones as a kind of a no-brainer for me and that's why this was the move that I had penciled in before game week 12 actually commenced. But now that kind of a Kai Havertz is out injured, Jota is available, Ben Shaw is out injured, Alonso is available, I think this move might be a little bit of a luxury one and therefore might go with the other two over Huang. But you guys let me know in the comments down below, what do you think the best move I can make this week or the move that has the most upside? I think it might be this Huang move. I mean, if Wolves do score a couple against their next two opposition, which they can, I think the upside for that is going to be absolutely massive because the ownership of Huang is super low. But finally, going on to the Game Week 13 team selection, and what I actually have done is I've set up the team as of now. I've not made any transfers here, so please don't look at this team and think it's the final team selection. I'm definitely going to be waiting for those Friday and those Thursday press conferences, or at least until we get some more news about Jota, Ben Shaw, those situations. And there might be some other injuries that happen, hopefully not in this midweek European football. So if you guys want the most up-to-date team selection, stay tuned to the kind of deadline with Davey live stream coming up. I think the deadline is on Saturday, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. But on Saturday, an hour before the deadline, make sure you guys are there to get the most up-to-date team as possible. But right off the bat, when looking at the starting 11, the fixtures look absolutely sensational because the only player that doesn't play at home is going to be Harry Kane. In this FPL season, we've seen the return of this home advantage and theoretically, this should be quite a high scoring game. But when we kind of look back, don't look at the holistic approach. We take a little bit more of a detailed approach. The fixtures are a little bit met, to be honest. I'm going to start off with the bench because there might be some benching headaches this week. I don't personally think so. I think this is pretty straightforward. But Ben Foster on the bench against Leicester, even though I I should probably play them as Leicester without Tielemans look absolutely spineless, but I think that I have to go with kind of a Sanchez on this one over Foster in net. Adam Armstrong against Liverpool, although Liverpool's defense hasn't been that strong, I do think that you've got to kind of play the odds here, and I should be hoping for a trend clean sheet. The big one, though, is probably going to be Antonio against Man City, and the reason I'm benching him is that when you look at the other fixtures, and just consider maybe a transfer in this week, I think those fixtures outperform Antonio against Man City. is an away game, Antonio has me performing that well, and that's why I think I'm perfectly fine with benching the West Ham striker. The final player though is Douglas Luiz, he's always going to be on my bench, I don't even think he's back fit right now so I don't think he's going to be going anywhere but third place. 
But now going on to our starting 11, and I'm going to start off with the goalkeeper, Sanchez against Leeds. So Leeds at home is a little bit of a tricky fixture here. You Rafinha owners probably hoping for a return against Brighton, but I just think with him coming back from that red card suspension, suffered quite a bad loss in game week 12 against Aston Villa. The new Stevie G kind of managerial reign. I think that Brighton will look to bounce back, and not only bouncing back, it is a home fixture. I think they're going to want to kind of lose against Leeds. So I'm kind of hoping that Sanchez comes out with a clean sheet. Going on to our big at the back, not really so much big at the back with the downgrade uh, to Ben White, but we still have some great fixtures on paper. We've got Ben White against Newcastle. This is definitely a game that I think Arsenal can keep a clean sheet, but actually Newcastle on great form from an attacking point of view. We saw in game week 12, they're scoring three goals. I mean, whenever Gucci and Maxim is going to be playing, you've got to be worrying about the clean sheet. And that's why I'm a little bit worried about Ben White. And that's why if I did bring in maybe an Adam Armstrong, a Tu Huang, I might just sub Ben White for this fixture. We then have James against United, which is a little bit of a tough game here. Uh, Michael Carrick's first game in the Premier League, but it is Reese James. Great form at the moment. I mean, if he doesn't keep a clean sheet, he probably will score a goal. So I'm definitely happy playing him at the end of the day. We will unfortunately have to see how maybe that Chelsea defense adjusts to not having Ben Chilwell. Will they be a little bit more vulnerable on that left-hand side? Will they be able to shore it up with someone like a Marcus Alonso? Who kind of knows? But I think this will be a good test against United. Cancelo and Diaz combining against West Ham. And that's kind of the reason I'm also benching Antonio because I really do hope for a double Man City clean sheet here. Cancelo always has that attacking threat. Diaz has attacking threat off those set pieces. But unfortunately, this season hasn't been that great from a set piece threat point of view. But hopefully maybe against West Ham, he get on the scoring sheet. But these two have high hopes for them. And I do think they both will start. The final defender to go by is going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold with a nice little fixture against Southampton. Now, Southampton have actually been quite strong over these last couple of game weeks, but I think this is going to be quite a cagey affair, probably quite a close one, and therefore I hope that Trent can come out with a defensive return and hopefully some attacking returns as well. Our Midfoot apartment continues that run of home fixtures. We have Mo Salah against Southampton, who will definitely be our captain for this week. Just too much kind of speculation about these other options. Kane versus Burnley won't really touch that. And from my defensive point of view, won't captain a defender against West Ham and then also United. So Salah yet again will be our kind of perma captain for at least the next couple game weeks. And against Southampton, I do think he has quite a good history. And that's why I'm perfectly fine going for the Egyptian. We will unfortunately have to play in Bumo against Everton. I'm saying unfortunately because I don't really think there should be too many returns for him in these upcoming game weeks. Now Everton is a little bit more of a tough opposition and Brentford have been actually playing better against the better teams. So we're going to have to see how maybe they adjust to the situation. And Everton also, after conceding three to Man City, they are looking a little bit susceptible. And I think that hopefully Mbumo can finally get on the scoring sheet after hitting the post so many times. Kai Havertz is unfortunately currently oranged or yellow flagged because of that injury that he has picked up, I think, after game week 12. So I don't even know if he's going to be featuring, but I'll be waiting for that press conference to get some more indication. But definitely, I think that he's a little bit of a worry in my current starting 11, as I don't really want to play him if he doesn't start, because then he's probably going to come off the bench late on and only get me one point. But the final midfield I'm super excited about, it's going to be Smith Rowe against Newcastle. Definitely a game that he can get some returns in. And I think on that kind of side that he usually plays, uh, Newcastle have been conceding a couple of chances. And therefore, I think I'll play perfectly into Smith Rowe's hands. And in the final player in our starting 11, the only player to have an away fixture, it's going to be Harry Kane against Burnley. Now, I do think this Burnley game might be slightly more suited to Harry Kane than the Leeds game, as the Leeds game, it looked like uh, kind of Spurs had to bring the ball up quite high and then carry it down the pitch. And I think maybe against Burnley, this might be more of a setup shop kind of game. And I think that might suit Harry Kane, hopefully better, because I think we need some returns from him. The good fixes are kind of a ticking down here. Three lovely fixes coming up and Harry Kane is quite expensive. So if he doesn't end up returning, turning soon we probably will have to ship him but overall as i said the team is looking quite stacked with those home fixtures and i'm hoping for yet another green arrow as we continue our run to the top 10k but this is basically wrap up the video guys hopefully you did enjoy it please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet but drop your comments down below your concerns for this upcoming game week i answer every single comment so you guys don't have to worry about being missed and otherwise i'll see you guys for the ultimate guide coming up tomorrow and the deadline with davy's stream coming up on saturday morning evening afternoon wherever you guys are around the world but i'm signing off it's been davy fpl and i'm out cheers bye